let's check out the advanced mode. I'm going to open it up by clicking on this pencil tool here. And the first thing you'll notice is a visual waveform. So this is an actual visual representation of the waveform contained within that pad. If I change it to another one, you'll see it will update. And let's go through the options. We have fixed velocity. So if I change the velocity of all these notes in the sequencer, you'll hear that it's attached to the volume. So each note is having a different volume. But if I choose fixed velocity, all the notes are going to be played exactly the same velocity. Let me just reload my loop here. Let's talk about one shot and gate. So this is how the sample plays or how it ends more like. So if I choose one shot, it's going to play the sample in its entirety. It's going to play from the start to the finish whenever the sequencer sends across a trigger. However, if I choose gate, whenever it receives a note off value, whenever the sequencer stops or plays a note off, which is the end of the colored square here, it's going to trigger the release time and then fade away at an amount that I specify. So it's kind of similar to the release envelope dial here, but we can do it here. So let's bring this short. We can make it very short or we can make it very long. I'm going to go back to one shot mode and let's talk about the variation. I'm going to put in more notes here as well, just like we did before. So the variation adds an element of randomness to various things which the sequencer can do, or various things when the sequencer sends a trigger to the sample. So for example, we can choose velocity variation. So currently the velocity is all at its max. However, if I bring this up, you can hear that each individual note now has a random velocity. And this is really good for adding a bit of humanization to things, especially drums. In fact, let's do that now. I'm going to unsolo this drum pad and I'm going to solo this shaker. Here it is here. Let's add in a bunch of notes. Bring up the gain. Now if I add some velocity, you can hear they're all kind of slightly different. And again, it makes it sound a little bit less like a computer. Let's talk about the pitch variation. We'll go back to our sample up here. If I bring the pitch variation up, have a listen. So each note is now randomly changed a little bit in pitch. Again, good for humanization if you want to get something a little bit weird sounding. We'll bring that down. Let's do the time, have a listen. You can hear now the start time of the samples is all changed just a little bit. It's offset by somewhere between 0 and 61 milliseconds. This is really good for broken beats, slow beats, hip hop, lo-fi hip hop, that kind of thing where you really want some sloppy organic sounding stuff. Let's just unsolo it. Really good for kind of lazy sounding beats, I quite like it. We have the filter variation. First I need to enable a filter, so I'm going to bring the filter dial down so we have a low pass. We'll bring the resonance up a bit so we can really hear it, and let's bring the filter variation up. You can hear now each note has a different filter cutoff. Let's listen to that. Super cool. We have a pan, so if I bring this up, the pan is going to randomly play in the left and the right. Turn the filter off. And we also have a pan mirror, so this is handy if, let's say I pan everything to the left with the pan dial, and I bring up the pan variation, we're not really reaching the right hand side. But if I turn on pan mirror, we're kind of borrowing some of the pan information from the left and it's going to play some pan notes on the right. Let's turn that off and bring the pan down. Bring the pan back to center. We have a phase flip. This is more of a utility. So if something's not really sitting right, especially in the low end, you can click this and it will flip the phasing of the sample. You usually can't hear an audible difference when you turn this on or off. For the reverse sample, I'm going to be using this sample here, which is a good vocal, a little bit more interesting Body to play bad. with. I'm going to change the sequence length to four bars, and let's just add in a few notes just so we have some regular playing sound. Get rid of that one. Let's click on play. Body bag. Body bag. I'm going to solo Body the track, bag. Body bag. and now I'm going to click on reverse. 
you'll see that the visual waveform is flipped, but we're currently getting silence. The reason for that is if I turn it back the right way, you'll see there's a bunch of silence at the end of the clip, so reversing it puts that at the start, so that's not ideal. What I'm going to do is use this little circle here and change the sample start. So when we move it to where there's some content, it's going to start playing the sample from wherever this line is. We also have a sample end, so if I bring this one back, we can make it really short. And we can also fade it in and fade it out. So you can get really, really selective of what part of the sample you want to play when the, tr when the pad is triggered. Let's reverse it back, and let's bring the start time back here. Bring the end time down, and we'll fade it out. Another thing to note is this slider down the bottom. If you click and zoom, you can zoom right into your sample and get much more fine tuning of where you position these parameters. Let's talk about the choke group. It's this area here, and it gives us five different groups we can assign to the drum pad. And what happens is when two or more samples are in the same choke group, when one sample plays, it's going to stop playing the audio of any of the other samples in that group. So to give you an example, let's change the length again to four. And I'm going to choose this sample here because it's a really prominent sounding long sample. I'm going to trash everything and just put in one clip here. Let's turn the gain up and click on play. Now if I add a kick and a snare, you'll hear everything is playing. This long sample here continues to play when the kick and snare are playing. But if I go ahead and assign this to choke group number one, and assign the snare to choke group number one, you'll hear when the snare plays, it's now cutting the sound of this other sample. So this is really handy to set up to get things out of the way of each other. If you've got lots of uh, frequencies being used, you can use this to ensure that samples aren't going to play over one another. Finally, let's talk about the external out. This is really handy for when you're using Atlas as a plugin inside your DAW and you want individual drum pad channels or individual samples to go into different tracks within your DAW. So I've got this loaded up as a VST plugin in Ableton Live and I want to extract the kick, the snare and say this other pad here. So the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to choose the kick, I'm going to choose the external out channel and I'm going to choose number two. For the snare, I'm going to choose number three. For this other pad, I'm going to choose number four. Now when I close this down, I'm going to create three audio channels in Ableton Live, one, two, and three. And now I can choose where the audio comes from for each channel. So I'm going to use this drop down menu and choose Atlas One. So the, the, wherever Atlas is, you choose as your main source. This is the one track which has Atlas on it here. And in the second drop down menu, I'm going to choose what channel I want. In this case, channel number two. Let's do it again for the snare. So number one Atlas, and let's choose channel three. Again, number one Atlas and channel four. I turn the monitor to in on all three of those audio tracks and play. You can see the kick coming through here, the snare here, and the other here. We can solo these. Or we can do things like add effects. So I'm gonna group the kick and the snare together, add a drum bus, and bring the transient shaper up. So a really handy way of if you want to change the sound or do some kind of mixing once you've come up with your beat and sequence inside of Atlas. Okay.